Well, we're talking again with uh, Babette Rothschild about the book Eight Keys to Safe Trauma Recovery. And in particular, Babette, uh, I want to ask you something about the third key, which may be a bit surprising to some uh, some people. Your third key is called Remembering is Not Required. Right. Can you say some more about that? Sure. Um, one of the holes I think we have in offerings professionally and in self-help books to people who are recovering from trauma is almost every method and book requires that people process, review, revisit the memories of whatever the horrible thing is that happened to them or horrible things that happened to them as a part of a trauma treatment, trauma recovery program. And more and more I think it's being recognized that for some people, that is not a good strategy. There's several reasons why it might not be. The first reason, maybe even the most important reason, is not everybody wants to do that. And there's no reason why someone should be forced to revisit memories if that does not appeal to them. Another very important reason for not reviewing memories is that actually some people become worse rather than better from uh, revisiting, reliving, reprocessing um, trauma memories. It doesn't serve everybody well. And so I wanted to reinforce and maybe for some people for the first time introduce the idea that it's not necessary to remember trauma and re-remember and revisit and relive it um, in order to recover from it. But I've heard uh, and, and read too that um, important ways in which uh, people have worked with uh, people recovering from trauma is to do with uh, exposure, with flooding, with getting them to the point where they can uh, go over the memories without being too uh, aroused by them. Is that uh, what you're saying seems to be contradicting that? It's not necessarily contradictory, and I think it's adding to the, the base of choices people have. Because for some people, that will be very useful. But for the people that it's not useful, they need other options. And again, like I said before, for the people who don't want to, they, they also need other options. In general, um, people reco who recover from trauma on their own don't flood themselves with memory again and again of what happened to them. Uh, they may review for short periods of time or um, review in bits and pieces, but they, they go on and their memories naturally drift into the past. With traumas, people who are suffering from trauma still, who, who have PTSD or other, other levels of disturbance from, from traumas that they've experienced, um, they often become rather obsessed with their memories, trying to figure out what happened to them, and then the therapy models actually often reinforce that um, uh, obsession with tracking down details and uh, reviewing. One of the weaknesses of that, and, and there are certainly plenty of, of outcome studies that indicate a benefit from that practice. However, those research studies are careful in who they choose as the subjects of the studies. And they choose, for the most part, people who are fairly stable to begin with mm. um, before they apply those methods. And they also choose people who want to pursue those methods so that they don't have dropouts to report mm -hmm. in their research studies. And so there is a bit of skewing in, in outcome research. We know for the most part that outcome research is the most biased research mm -hmm. um, that we have in psychotherapy and, and in psychology. And um, with good reason because people want their outcome research to support their methods. It, you know, it's certainly understandable. But it doesn't necessarily lead to sound and common sense conclusions for the, the average person who's looking to recover from their trauma. Okay. So I see a link between this uh, key of not being required to go back into the past 
And the second key that we were talking about a bit a little while ago, that uh, the thing to do is to celebrate that you've survived and the yes. trauma is over. So it yes. seems like these two work together. Um, they can do. They absolutely can do. And, and I, I put them in the order that I did in the book for that reason, that someone can celebrate their survival, recognize that they that the trauma is over and that they actually survived it without having to go sure. into the memories of it. And so that, yes, they can absolutely complement each other. So somebody who's completed or got, got hold of that idea then has a choice. Absolutely. Do I want to know what happened? Absolutely. Or looking around me now at my life as it is, would I like to move forward? Absolutely. I want to make sure that both you and the people listening to this interview mm -hmm. understand I'm not saying that no one should revisit sure. their trauma memories. Mm -hmm. What I what I'm really trying to do is broaden the options. Yeah. Sure. Um, which is a, a basic philosophy of mine to broaden options rather than restrict them. I want there to be more of a smorgasbord um, or buffet for mm -hmm. trauma sufferers to choose from for strategies. I don't want to narrow it. I want to add more dishes to the table. Thanks very much. Sure. Thanks, Michael.